So today I'm missing my trips to America. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really want to come back. Never yeah, back in. There are a million valid reasons. I genuinely can't wait for all of this to be over so I get to travel again. It will be so great. I wanted to look at a couple of observations that I made while I was traveling about the way you do some things differently than how we do them. Almost exactly like what this channel is about. Cultural observations. Before I get into the video, do be sure to subscribe, otherwise the next time your dog gives you a kiss, it won't be a nice kiss, it'll be a big licky lick kiss that's real smelly and drooly and not a lovely lick kiss, it'll just be a hoo. And if you don't have a dog, well, that's curse enough. And good news for the channel, thanks to so many of you guys trialing Surfshark and they are back to support us on another video. It's an app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world and lets you access the internet as if you were in that country. You can access and unblock websites that usually you might not be able to see. This has been especially handy for some of our interactions on Twitter and Facebook when you'll send me links and in turn I'll send you things to watch. For example, if you're in America and that website is blocked here, I can watch it in Ireland and say that I'm in America. Or vice versa, if I do TV shows here in Ireland you guys can watch them with this VPN. A lot of the people who downloaded it last time said that the thing they found particularly handy was the fact that they could use it on all their different devices. You can log into the same account on your phone, on your MacBook, and that makes it unique from all the other VPNs. I know some of you are aware I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist and I kind of think that people want access to all of your information all the time and that's not that wild an idea these days. So having a VPN to protect your passwords, your credit card information and all of your personal stuff is super important. Use my code Diane to get 83% off plus three months extra free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risk in trying it out for yourself and supporting a sponsor who supports this channel. Thanks Surfshark and on with the video. Yippee! Okay, the first thing that you guys do that I noticed, and this was when I was tailgating the first time in Texas, is that you guys boil hot dogs. Now, who am I, an Irish person, to argue with how the Americans do hot dogs? But I have to say, this did seem odd to me. In Ireland, generally speaking, when it comes to frankfurters, which is what we put in hot dogs here, we put them in the microwave? Microwaves, are you kidding me? If you're doing a barbecue, usually you'll put the hot dog on the barbecue. It won't be a frankfurter, it'll be like a different kind of sausage, but never, ever, ever would it have occurred to me to boil the hot dog. And as if I didn't have a confirmation enough in itself, when I came back and I did a hot dog eating contest here in Ireland, uh, you guys ripped me to shreds for putting them in the microwave. I can't even imagine how to boil a hot dog. I wouldn't know where to begin. I guess you just boil the water and put the hot dog thing. And then how do you know they're done? Is it like an egg? You just kind of guess? I know I'm not the greatest at cooking, but I think you'll find most people in Ireland would find it surprising that you boil the hot dogs. Again, I'm gonna bow to you on this one. You are the capital of hot dogs. So I don't know, whatever way it translated here, we're doing it wrong. The next thing is your mailboxes. You guys have your mailboxes outside on the grass or really far away from your house. In Ireland, our mailboxes are in the front door, like they're part of the front door. Do you have that there at all or is it just the far away ones? I was recently watching one of my true crime things about this woman uh, who went missing when she went to her mailbox and I was so confused for the first 20 minutes of that show. I was literally like, she went to the front door. How did she go missing between her front door and her sitting room? Where could she have gone? I can't find her anywhere. And then it turned out her mailbox was a mile and a half away from her house. Like what? I understand in some cases that makes sense when you live on like a cliff or something that your mailbox might need to be far away for access for the postman. But it seems to me that all houses have their mailboxes away from the front door. How comes? Is it just accessibility? Or would it be that much harder to go up to the front door? And is that why a lot of your Amazon deliveries get stolen? Because people put them at your post box rather than at your front door? The next thing that I noticed is you guys call each other by your last names, like a lot. There are certain scenarios here when we'll call each other by our last names, Jennings, uh, usually when somebody's being like cute or cheeky or something. Or if you're in the army. I'm not in the army. So that, it doesn't happen often. In America, it seems like you guys know each other by your last names in a lot of cases. Do sometimes you not know people's first names? Like Flanders, everyone in the neighborhood calls him Flanders. I know he's a fictitious character, but I don't think I recall anyone on The Simpsons aside from his wife calling him Ned. Not true. Ned, it'd be. Ned's a funny name. Are any of the viewers called Ned? That's a funny name. I don't know, it just struck me as funny. It's not like Miss Jennings, it's just Jennings. The next thing 
thing that I noticed is strange in America is you have to have ID on you at all times. Now I've spoken about needing ID in bars and stuff there, which seems strange to us here in Ireland, because if you look like you're over 18 or over 25, you definitely don't need an ID here. But something I haven't touched upon is the fact that you actually need to carry ID on you in America all the time. ID please. Now here in Ireland, if pressed, I probably have got some kind of form of identification in my wallet if I looked. I mean, my credit card has my name on it. My provisional license has my name on it as of recently, but it's not something I have to have. I can never imagine being stopped by the Gardaí and asked for my ID and being very expected to have it. I might just say, I don't have ID. Hypothetically, were you a young student caught on the Lewis without a ticket, you could arguably say that you don't have ID on you and that would be very much accepted. Not that I've ever been in that scenario, um, that never happened. Always buy a Lewis ticket, kids. But I think I gave a false name or something. Me? I didn't, I didn't, that, oh God, no, my, it's gone. But yeah, it just seems funny to us here that you guys have to have your ID on you at all times. It makes total sense in a way, like if you accidentally got hit by a car or something and went to hospital, people would know who you are. Whereas here, I don't know, they'd have to check your phone or something. Like you probably would have a wallet on you with your name on it, but you wouldn't be required to. Is it required there? Am I wrong? The next thing that seems really strange to me, and my question for you is, is this surrounding religion, is to do with funerals. Ah, something cheery of a Friday, huh? It seems to me like your funerals all take place by the graveside. May your soul rest in peace. In Ireland, they'll usually take place in a church of whatever denomination. Is that only if you're religious there? I have never seen a funeral take place by the graveside. What happens in Ireland is you do the church thing and then you all go to the graveside and you say a little prayer by the coffin and then you all leave. But there, you sit around it and you throw things on it and then you watch as it gets lowered down and it all seems just very, I don't know, I find that very emotionally traumatic but maybe you'll disagree with me. Maybe you say it makes you have a good goodbye to the person. I see the theory in that. Let me know your thoughts on graveside funerals in the comments. The next thing is I have to say the size of your wild animals is like something to behold. In New York City, I saw a rat on the train line and oh Jesus Christ, it was about 10 times the size of a Dublin rat. Rats running all over the place, the size of footballs. I can see why people are afraid of rats in America if they're that big. I guess they eat well in New York, that makes sense. Also, you have other wild animals that seem bigger, like the squirrels walking around the parks there seem bigger. I know often internationally there's a joke about how American people are bigger, but nobody ever talks about how the wild animals are bigger. They are significantly bigger. I guess it's just access to food, maybe people throw away food a lot there. Also, what are those things that go in garbage bins? We don't have them here, I don't think, as much. Is it badgers? R raccoons? They seem huge, huge. The next thing I wanna talk about is eye doctors and the fact that you call them eye doctors and eyeglasses. Eyeglasses. I find that funny the way they say eyeglasses. They that motel. Why do they say eyeglasses? What's wrong with the motel? It's really old school looking. I mean, that's the start of a horror movie. Yeah. But why would the glasses be for other than your, I suppose, because you drink out of glasses. Yes. It's funny that Americans need that clarification. No you have to specify there for your eyes. Here we differentiate different types of eye doctor. We have opticians, ophthalmologists, optometrists. There you just have eye doctors and you go see the different levels of eye doctors. I'm sure technically they're called those words but nobody seems to refer to them as those words. You just say eye doctor and I wondered why that is. It's not so much a language thing, it's like you guys just don't differentiate between those people. And I guess if you're one of those people, you'd really want to like define the fact that you're a person who trained for like six years as opposed to one snobbery over your career, you know? But you guys don't and I don't know why that is. Maybe you're just not that interested in eye doctors. The next thing is how obsessed you guys are with Halloween. And this is one that I'm all for because I love Halloween. And I gotta say, I need to study you for our Halloween episodes they're not gonna be great this year I had a thing planned 
and because of lockdown in Dublin, I can't do it this year. We'll do something, but it just won't be the big spectacular event that pretty much nobody watches, but I know the hardcore viewers of this channel enjoy. Uh, we'll do something, it just won't be that. But yeah, you guys love Halloween. It's so cool. We don't have that as much here, though they are trying to commercialize it more because, you know, money. It seems like you guys hype Halloween as much as you hype Christmas. Here we have some pop-up Halloween shops that happen and sell costumes in recent years. But there, it seems like you guys have Halloween shops year round. Also, your houses are super decorated, which is very cool too. I wonder what's gonna happen this year for trick-or-treating. Hmm, oh. Well, we'll still watch scary things. It'll be okay. Okay, the next thing that I've noticed is that you guys have fast food restaurants, uh, specific ones, and then you'll have the same exact chain like really nearby. I noticed this when I was in Walmart and there was a Dunkin Donuts in Walmart and then we went out into the parking lot and there was a Dunkin Donuts out in the parking lot and I was like, why would you need two Dunkin Donuts that close together? I also noticed it with McDonald's. There was a McDonald's on one side of the road and then a McDonald's on the other side of the road in Florida. But why do you need them so close together? Surely it would be better economically for those fast food chains to spread out not that they aren't already, they are. Surely people aren't so lazy that they won't just walk across the road. Or maybe that's a question that's answered itself by the very fact that those restaurants are there. And the number one very strange thing, and I'm not trying to start a flame war in the comments, it's just a cultural observation, is the lack of neutrality in the press. It seems to me that news there is presented a bit like reality television, no matter what the network. Like they'll go to tell a story and they'll have things staged within the story like and everyone just accepts it like somebody reenacting the thing that happened so that it's like entertainment. Also, elephant in the room, uh, your news networks have actual political sides and here very much neutrality of the press is focused on. Obviously it comes into play that people suggest that networks or presenters don't come across as neutral or whatever but generally speaking it's kind of held as a central belief that the news shouldn't take a side. Is neutrality of the press just not a thing there, I guess? Pick a side and stay there. And that's it for today. Let me know below in the comments what things you think I need clarification on. Uh, I always enjoy reading your comments. That's it, bye. Why is my chair so squeaky? I'll just sit like this the whole time. Oh, that Like there are actual like they'll go to tell us maybe you're just not that interested in oh, maybe you're just not that in uh, uh also elephant is also uh, oh this chair is so annoying oh it stopped i wonder what we're gonna i wonder what's gonna happen why can't i talk today um yeah spaced out there for a second i'm not gonna lie <laughs>